Defense companies secure billions of dollars every year from government contracts to construct and maintain nuclear weapons and the crafts and facilities that house them. The Congressional Budget Office projects that the U.S. government could spend $634 billion on nuclear forces between 2021 and 2030. This is a $140 billion increase from the previous estimate of $494 billion between 2019 and 2028. So there's no one company that produces nuclear weapons from start to finish. There's only about 25 companies that are involved in the production of nuclear weapons, but they're quite heavily involved. Many of these companies are publicly traded, which means they have millions of shareholders and investors. Defense sector stocks began outperforming the market amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine. There's not a lot of focus on nuclear risk among the financial and business community. I think investors have as much responsibility as the companies do. You can't sort of cherry pick when it's important to you with the defense contractors and the weapons contractors. That, you know, it, it is clear they make weapons of mass destruction. Here are some of the companies that are profiting off of nuclear weapons and how the investor community feels about it. When it comes to nuclear weapons and the platforms that deliver them, the U.S. government puts out a bid saying we want to build a new, say, intercontinental ballistic missile. Uh, and then uh, private companies put forward proposals and uh, here's what we would do, here's how much it would cost. Uh, and then the U.S. government chooses a company uh, to, to build the system or sometimes it chooses a coalition of companies. The delivery vehicles, the aircraft, the submarines, the missiles are all contracted by the Pentagon. But then the nuclear warheads are contracted through the Department of Energy, which has these facilities run by corporations on management contracts. And they have a special section, the National Nuclear Security Administration, which is the part of the Department of Energy that runs the warhead complex. The Department of Defense designated $34.4 billion toward nuclear weapon modernization out of its $796 billion budget for fiscal year 2022. The Department of Energy allocated about $20.6 billion for the National Nuclear Security Administration in fiscal year 2022. This was out of its total budget of more than $44.9 billion. So there's Northrop Grumman, which makes the new bomber and the new ICBM. There's Lockheed Martin, which makes submarine launch ballistic missiles. There's General Dynamics and Huntington Ingalls, which make the submarines that launch those submarine launch ballistic missiles. There's companies like Honeywell, uh, which runs the factory in Kansas City that makes all the non-nuclear parts for nuclear warheads. And Raytheon, which makes the new nuclear-armed uh, cruise missile. None of these companies make the entire weapon themselves. Rather, different companies make different components that are then assembled. For example, Raytheon makes the communication system for inside a nuclear weapon. And then Lockheed Martin makes the casing for the missile itself. And then a subdivision of Northrop Grumman, it makes another component that helps set off the trigger. And then Honeywell is involved in making the nuclear material that goes inside that detonates the weapon itself. And it's all put together in a facility that's operated by Huntington Ingalls Industries. In terms of what the defense industry is making from nuclear weapons, right, I, I don't think there's a lot of transparency, right? It's often a black box. And for a lot of obvious reasons, companies don't necessarily want to disclose it. There's some detail about the money flows related to nuclear weapons production and maintenance but it's limited, so you can find out through various machinations and databases. But then when does the money actually flow? You know, that can be a big contract for billions of dollars, but it might be spent over six or seven years. So to figure out the effect on the bottom line of the company can be very difficult. These companies don't usually put front and center in their kind of promotion of themselves. You know, I'm a nuclear weapons producer. Susie Snyder's report, Perilous Profiteering, named 25 companies around the world that are heavily involved in the production, manufacturing, and development of nuclear weapons. We do this as a way to help people see there is a, a role um, for the private sector in creating a world without nuclear weapons. It's hard to say cumulatively who makes the most on nuclear weapons, but if, for example, if you look at 2020, it's very clear that Northrop Grumman made the most in 2020 on nuclear weapons. That year, Northrop Grumman reported $13.3 billion in sales based on a nine-year contract with the Department of Defense to work on a nuclear weapon system called the Ground-Based Strategic Deterrent. That year, the company made more than $36 billion in total sales. Northrop Grumman declined CNBC's request for comment. You know, a lot of these are longer term contracts uh, because it takes a long time to develop and build these systems. So it could be anywhere from 
you know, like a three-year research and development contract from the Pentagon to uh, up to a 10-year contract to do engineering and manufacturing on the new intercontinental ballistic missile. When we talk about the companies involved in the production of, of nuclear weapons, it's most often not the biggest part of their business. Right now, Northrop Grumman is doing everything it can to protect a decision to invest in a new nuclear weapon system. Because for Northrop Grumman, it is a big deal. But for Lockheed Martin, it's not that big of a deal. The parts for nuclear weapons, sure, they're big contracts, but Lockheed Martin has tons more money going into producing planes than it does producing nuclear weapons. But it's not going to make anyone go bankrupt if they suddenly had to lose anything, with the possible exception, as I said, of, uh, of Northrop, because Northrop is banking a lot on this new weapon system. Investors have gone back and forth over time about whether companies involved in nuclear weapon manufacturing or maintenance are worth investing in. Well, there's been an ethical investing movement going back quite a while, probably at least since the Vietnam War, but it ebbs and flows. It just seems like the overall investor community outside of the faith-based in, in SRIs, the socially responsible investors, that they're kind of talking out of both sides of their mouths on this. I think a lot of professional investors on Wall Street think of like nukes are to some degree a necessary evil because other bad actors have them. To the degree that interest in divesting ebbs and flows a little bit, it's such a small percentage of investors in the U.S. that it's not going to affect the performance of defense stocks. I personally don't encourage divestment of weapons manufacturers. I think it's too simplistic and a blunt instrument. Divesting isn't about investing to make a change. It's more like, let me just get out of my investment in a bad actor. While impact investing is, oh, if I give the, if I provide capital for so-and-so company, they can invest in this positive enterprise. The SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission, has a minimum amount of shares that you have to hold in order to engage companies on corporate social responsibility activities and also leverage one of the levers that we have in our toolkit, which is filing shareholder proposals. Investors ask for disclosure on policies and practices to conduct risk assessments and whether there are government contracts a company simply should not pursue due to potential for irreparable harm at massive scale from the end use of its products. The war in Ukraine may be leading investors toward defense contractors. Major stocks in the defense sector rose on the news of Russia's invasion into Ukraine on February 24th, 2022. A March 2022 analyst note from Citi predicts that the defense sector is likely to be increasingly seen as a necessity that facilitates ESG as an enterprise, as well as maintaining peace, stability, and other social goods. What's going on in Ukraine reminds us, well, now, sometimes you need at least non-nuclear weapons. I think it reminds folks that these defense companies do a lot of different things. At least conventional weapons help defend a democracy and the well-being of the free world. Several secretaries of defense have said that nuclear deterrence is the most important mission uh, of the U.S. Department of Defense. Uh, we use them to deter nuclear attacks by our adversaries uh, against the United States and, and our allies. Uh, we use them to deter major non-nuclear attacks. When you talk about the defense sector, they need wars because that's their product line. <laughs> right? That's their business model is instability. So we see a short term um, surge of investment to the defense defense contractors and defense companies. Historically, those don't last for very long. I remember one defense contractor said to us, hey, you know, we really want the same thing. You know, we go about it a completely different way. Uh, we want peace. So there is like some defense contractors believe that the only way to to have peace is through war. That is not the sentiment of our investor community. And that is such a deeply flawed ideology. It doesn't look like spending on the nuclear arsenal will be slowing down anytime soon. The Pentagon has what it calls a nuclear modernization plan. 
which is the 30 year $2 trillion uh, plan to build all these new systems. You know, there's cycles for these things. So, you know, sometimes 20 years, sometimes 40 years, there'll be a bomber, a missile, a submarine. And the argument will be that they need to upgrade because it doesn't have up-to-date communication systems or there's just physical issues of wear and tear over time. U.S. nuclear weapons are old. They were built in the 1970s and 80s at the end of the Cold War. If you drive a car, it probably wasn't built in the 70s or the 80s. If so, it probably doesn't work that well. Uh, so you've probably bought a newer model. So same thing here. If the United States uh, needs to continue with nuclear deterrence, then it needs to uh, buy new nuclear weapons. It's not just swapping out rusty parts for new ones. Um, in the U.S. nuclear modernization process, it's also expanding capacities and capabilities. Then there's also a lot of people who just believe that nuclear weapons are a reasonable way to defend the country. And so there's kind of a whole history of arguments and experts in the Pentagon who basically accept this notion of deterrence, that you, know, you need enough to prevent another country from wanting to attack you. There's a reason that uh, every uh, presidential administration from the beginning of the Cold War has decided to maintain nuclear weapons and the reason you know there's business here is because that u.s national security officials see a real need uh, for these weapons uh, so these companies are filling a need uh, they're not pushing products that uh, senior national security officials don't want